thanks for watching Orange Dragon, the show where I show you how to have fun and get up off of your butt and just ways and ideas for you to be able to do that. Um, so this week I made a map for my aunt. She's writing a book. She's doing a connected series and the first book that she wrote is called Ugly Ducklings and it's on Amazon if you want to go check it out. It's really cool. And she had me make a map for it. Um, and this is what it looks like and I'm going to show you how I made this map. It looks pretty cool. This is my first video that I'm uploading onto YouTube so it might be a little weird because I'm not terribly experienced but I hope to be able I'm hoping to be able to put on more videos weekly um, and so you should be able to look at them. I might miss a few days here and there because you know I'm just really bad at getting into habits. Um, but I hope you enjoy this video. Okay, so the first thing I started fun. doing is I was just outlining the lakes. My aunt has a lot of lakes in her map, and so that was the main background thing for the map, and so that was very important that I get that done. Um, pretty much a lot of them have different thicknesses. I did mostly just a line for the lake, but then sometimes I did a double line to show, like, um where it was bigger because some of the lakes were a bit thicker than the other ones. And there's also an ocean and so I outlined that. And the lakes, the ones that aren't just single lines, I'm going to fill those in with some watercolors um, sometime later. So right now I'm just kind of outlining it in pencil. I'm going to do it in ink a little bit later. Um, and I kind of have a reference photo for this map that I'm doing. My aunt has some maps that she did. I'm just doing more of an artistic version, um, make it look prettier kind of thing. And I'm trying to be as realistic as possible. So while I was doing this, I was also looking at some maps on my phone. You might see that later in the video. For these mountains, I got the idea from a picture that I found on my phone of other maps. I looked up a bunch of ideas, but this is mostly original. I didn't try, I tried not to steal any ideas. I just kind of took little bits and pieces that I thought looked interesting and tried to copy that down. So my camera, it only, um, it only records every few minutes and so I had to keep re-recording. So sometimes you might see the picture come into focus and then out of focus and like at different angles and stuff. That's just part of how, when I was recording. So here I'm doing some trees for a forest. Pretty much what I did for that is I made a bunch of squiggly lines and I just kind of put it all over the place in a bunch of little squiggly lines. You can see that underneath my arm right now. Um, and here I'm doing some boats and some sea monsters because I think that that looks pretty cool on a map. If you're doing your own map, you don't necessarily have to do that. I just thought it was a pretty cool detail and I see that on a lot on little maps that are like fantasy type maps and old timey maps all have those little sea creatures and stuff so I decided to put that in there. So for the name of the map of the land, I looked up some pretty cool little um, letters that were super swirly and stuff, and I just kind of copied that down. I didn't find like the actual word, but I did find separate letters and I kind of connected them, and I think it looks pretty cool. Here you'll see me filling in some the names of some cities, and um, I'm, I tried to do... A little bit of swirliness and fanciness to like the beginning of the letters, but mostly I just kind of freehanded it. I didn't really look up anything for those ones. The only one that I really looked up anything for was the top name that was really big and bold. I decided to add a little bit more trees because it was kind of looking a little blank, so I added some trees along the sides of the lakes and stuff. And I think it looks okay, but you can choose if you're doing your own map, you can do whatever you want. Here I'm starting to ink. I used a Sharpie pen. I stole it from my brother and he got it from school. It's just an inking pen. It's not a marker. It's, it, it is a pen, but this one in particular is Sharpie if, if you want to look into that. So you'll notice I do it in pencil first um, when I'm doing this. I do the pencil first and then I'll outline it in the um, pen because it's kind of hard to go back and restart when you're doing it with pen and so it's a lot better to start with pencil so that if you make any mistakes you can erase it. Um, there are a couple of times where like I was writing a word and stuff and I had to erase the words because I didn't think that they looked really cool and so I'm just um, and then I ink it afterwards and I think that the inking looks pretty cool because it just it it makes it seem more 
in there. Like the pencil, it makes it gray and it looks just kind of like a little sketch. The inking pen makes it look like an actual map that somebody might get from an antique shop or something, which I thought looked pretty cool. And so that's why I'm doing the inking. You don't necessarily have to. You, if you want to do like more of an unfinished kind of thing, then you don't have to do the inking. But I thought that it was a nice touch. So definitely the most time consuming part in this map making was doing the trees because it's just a whole bunch of squiggly lines all put in together. And so that took a lot of time and detail, but I think it looks pretty cool. So, you know, you, you gotta put in some time and effort for those kind of things. So I had to add in a couple more pencil things after I did a lot of the inking because I talked to my aunt and we named all of the rivers and stuff. And so I had to fill those in and we added a few and she added a few more cities and so I had to add those into her map and um I think cuz I thought that it looked pretty blank and um and so I gave her some suggestions and she and she's doing another book which has a lot of cities too and so she decided to add those in. And so, yeah, here you can just see me adding in all of those cities. I think for a map, you need to make sure that there's as little blank space as possible because then it just kind of looks empty. Unless you're doing like a desert or something, then that could probably be pretty empty, but you'll put like the name of the desert really big and such. Um, but like land has a lot of places and different aspects and stuff and people tend to name things when they live there like if you've noticed just like everything has a name if there's a small stream it'll have a name and stuff so if you're doing your own map you'll want to name as many things as you can like if there's like a little hill you'll want to name it any rivers or streams that are of any significance whatsoever you're going to want to name those so just make sure that you name as many things as possible when you're doing a map And then comes time for the fun part. It's also the fastest part. You just start erasing. I think it's pretty satisfying and it's like a de-stressifier kind of thing. I think that some people might think that that's a little weird of me, but it really is tons of fun to just erase all of the lines and see like the black just start to pop out more without all the pencil. So I decided to watercolor this and what I'm using is kind of a goldish yellow watercolor paint and I filled it in really light at first and then started adding in some more detail. Um, so I started out with making the middle of the, in between the rivers darker than the outside, but I kind of changed my mind a little bit later, later, you'll see that. And, um, and I made the edges darker than, than the insides, um, because I think that it looks, it gives it more of a crisper feeling. So I'm darkening in the top of the mountains as well, and, um, the desert because it's got just kind of it's kind of more of an empty space and I kind of want to expand it outward because it's because empty spaces generally flow inward and so I imagine that it would be a little bit darker down there I'm kind of putting a little bit of shading around the forest as well just because it seems more natural to have more shade around the trees where it's blocking out a ton of sunlight that doesn't necessarily need to show up on maps but I think that looks nice so for the blue for the water what I did is I got some normal blue but I mixed in a little bit of the yellow to give it kind of a greenish color because I think it looks more antique that way um but with the sea monsters I just I did it the same yellow color as the rest of the map and I put a little bit of shading around them here you'll see me putting in I put it darker around the edges and then it got lighter as it went inward and I thought that looked really cool on the on the water um, so when I was filling this in with watercolor, I kind of let the water do its thing and it added some cool little textures and stuff into it. I didn't want to make too much of uh, too many crisp edges and stuff. 
I wanted it to kind of be more natural, and so I just kind of let the water, the, the paint flow into each other, unless I was changing colors um, between the water and the land. I wanted that to be pretty crisp, but in the water and on the land, I just kind of let the colors flow, to each, flow into each other. So for this color right here, when I was doing the going back onto the land um, to make it a little bit darker, I mixed in a little bit of blue and a little bit of red with the yellow. And I thought it looked really cool. Like it was more of a greenish yellow and it looked more antique that way. And I thought it looked awesome. And so you can do that or you can just stay with the yellow if you really want to. But I just really like the antique feel that the, that the greenish color kind of gives to it. So what I would do here is I would do a really thick um, around the edges. And then I just kind of dip the brush in the water and go outward to mix it in and kind of um, make it blend in with the rest of the map. Um, as you can see, and how I did like the kind of thicker thing is you just kind of get a little bit of water and then you dip it into the powder so that you get a thick and then you go in with the water and you kind of rub it outwards. I did it in little circular motions. And so here's the finished product of my map. I think it looks pretty cool. Tell me if you like the video. Hey, and thanks for watching that video. I hope that you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. If you really liked it, please give me a like and a subscribe and comment below any ideas that you have for any other upcoming videos I have. Um, next week, I think I'm going to be doing rock pets if you're interested in that. So see you later.